the relationship with Lana got pretty rough. Well, let's be you know, real. Was this ever like a sincere relationship on your end? Because it, it to me, it always kind of seemed like a clout grab. And I felt like you were always kind of trying to talk yourself into thinking or into like fooling the world into believing that this was for real purposes. But I don't, I feel like you guys were never really like that clicked up like that. Right. I think once again, it's just complicated. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I think, I think, I think, uh, me and Lana um, became like real allies, real partners. Because as we know, love, like real love and real relationships exist outside of just that idea that you're going to be together forever mm -hmm. or that this, you know, this, this like soulful connection of love. And like, it's great when it's based on that. But I think we found a... We found like a partner in each other of two people who kind of had been through the ringer and we're going to be there to kind of like support each other. Mm. Uh, it was more of like a real deep friendship, I would say, you know, than anything. And, and we still are, we still are friends to this day. But still, she wanted to settle down and have kids and you did yeah, not. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a part of you that's more open to that idea now? Yeah. Oh yeah. Really? A hundred percent. Was it part of the reason why you didn't want to then because it was just her? Specifically? No, no. I think it was a timing thing. Mm. I think in my mind, at, in, well, also, I, I don't know. I don't know. In my eyes now, it was a timing thing. But like, yeah, they're like, listen, like we 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 had some pretty bad blowouts, bro. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like I real, real, real nasty. Some of them took place on Twitter. Yeah, but there were some lists. But there was yeah, that no, no, that was nothing. <laughs> that was just content, bro. I mean, like real, like nasty shit that was like detrimental. You know what really? I'm saying? That could have become a problem, right? And and when it got to that point where you know, for anybody watching this who's in a relationship that's toxic at that level, you've really got to start to value and put a put a price tag on your life, your career, your name. You know what I'm saying? And it was getting into some shit where it was where some of that stuff was going to potentially be questioned mm. um, or or put into into flux. And. That's when you just got to say, yo, like, it's just not worth it. It's mm. not worth the idea of us working this out, this dream sequence where we, you know, <laughs> somehow all this fighting ends and we run off into the sunset together yeah. with these kids and get this house together. Like that dream is not worth it at the expense of our current reality. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Which is this day to day um, fighting because she was she just was not cool with with my lifestyle she was not cool with with other women um which obviously like would seem strange but but for her like that's not what she was looking for she was looking for a, a, a true partner that was locked in um and and i just wasn't at the time i was so focused on growing my brand and my career and and all that stuff so See, well sorry but I, I just gotta ask this when i watch your videos which i love Thank it's you. like I'm watching a version of myself because there are enough similarities that it feels like this very easily could be me because we're almost the same age from the East Coast, been through a shitload of stuff, somehow find ourselves at a point at like 40 where we have a lot of opportunities available to us that you could always kind of be on the move. There's always exciting new people to hang out with, exciting new content to make, new bags to pick up, new sponsors to work with, new people that have brands that want to fuck with you, et cetera. And it's like at a certain point around 2019, around the time that I fell back on partying, I kind of said like, okay, I'm going to really just focus on grinding this content and I'm going to make my life way less social. And I don't know how much of this was like something I was cognizant of, but then obviously having the kid kind of like further forced my hand and like pushed me into a lifestyle that slowed down a lot. But then I see your videos and I'm like, oh, my life, if I had kept my <laughs> foot on the gas would be a lot more like this, where I'm at some fucking beer garden with Karina Kampf or whoever the fuck. And you know, you're just constantly on the move doing different stuff. And then I see moments where you're in bed, uh, you know, talking to the camera and it's like, you've been on the road for two weeks or three weeks and you're, you're exhausted, but you're having a fucking blast. But also you being 40, there's part of you 38. where 38, you said 40 in video. Okay. I thought you were actually 40 when I heard you say it, but there's part of you that is like, fuck, something is going to have to change. And it might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. 
and I might be able to live this life for another five years, but chances are that you're just not going to be living this life in 10 years, right? And I feel like that's something that kind of weighs on you, even though you are taking the maximum advantage of the situation that you're in right now. But there's part of you that knows at some point you're going to pivot away from being a YouTuber. You're going to pivot away into whether it's business, whether it's family, whether it's something different, like Am I am I correct? That that's something that weighs on you. One hundred percent. No, it all and by the it, it all weighs on you. That's the thing is like is like it's a every for all of us. Like this isn't a me thing. Life is just heavy, bro. Mm. It's just really fucking heavy, bro. I mean that. And 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 you know a lot of that shit seems glamorous. And I want to and I want to and I want to say this, man. Just just looking back. People, a lot of these dudes are doing cool shit, but I'm doing real cool shit, bro. Mm. Like, re I really mean that, like on a global fucking scale. And, and a lot of this shit doesn't even get shared. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've had, bro, I've had nights out in uh, Gold Coast where I'm getting on the elevator at the Langham, and I see a dude get off with security, and I turn around and look, and he turns around and he looks, and I go, Dave? And he goes, Mike? Dave Chappelle, getting off the elevator oh, at the wow. Langham. He goes, come to my show tonight. I got a show in Brisbane. You know, come up. And I got these two Australian models with me, and we go up. His manager hits me, come to the green room. It's just me, uh, us three. Come to the green room after. We go in. He's got a red room, not a green room. He keeps the, the lights red. He thinks it, like, calms him down, whatever. We sit there, and he's, man, what you guys are doing in the podcast. You know, I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand my life at this moment. Mm. Like, I'm sitting in Australia, like, in Brisbane, Australia, in another world, like, years away from where I came from as a drug addict. But that's you know why saying? you stay as in nice hotels because you might run into well, Dave Chappelle maybe, by accident. Right, right. You know? But I'm but I'm sitting there and he's you know he's he's got his drink and we're just kicking it talking. He's playing me unreleased podcast with him and Kanye and Bill Murray and, and Talib Kweli and I'm like what is going on? And I say I'm sitting there with him for two hours that Dave do you want to go and get a bite to eat. So we call this restaurant in Brisbane. They got these big Wagyu steaks. It's one in the morning. We'll open back up for y'all. They bring all the chefs in. Dave rolls with this massive security detail, four sprinters, all the security because he's gotten run up on in South Africa and he's gotten, they try to stab him in LA, all this shit. Wow. And I'm sitting there eating this fucking steak with Chappelle and we're talking about addiction and opiate wow. epidemics in Ohio and my book and all this shit. And I have this, then we go out after that to a club and I have this long, you know, six and a half hour you know, adventure with Dave Chappelle and just me and him and 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 just spending the night just having a fucking good time. And this right? never made it to the ground. I never made I mean, you know, you never I'll took say a selfie? like I took a selfie with him, okay. but like, but like, you know, never like oh we partied. I never talked because because once you start to really make it a big thing, once you say, Oh yeah, Abel says what's up to me at his release party or this happens or that, like once you start to turn it into it, the mother will stop talking to you. They're mm. just cause they're gonna be like, Oh, he's out here talking. So I try to but I'm 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 talking about this one just to illustrate you know, this this very interesting scenario that I found myself in over the past, you know, five years. And 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 of course, shout out to Logan and shout out, shout out to all the people that I've that I've collaborated with and 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 yo, I owe everything to Logan for for taking a chance on me and putting me on. We just hit six hundred thousand subscribers on the clips channel right here. We're trying to get to seven hundred, so you know what to do. Smack that red button and subscribe. Appreciate you.